This time on Graveyard Cars, Alyssa and Dougie finish building out the 440 engine for the 1968 GTX, currently in assembly. That's Whoa. good. That's good. Okay. And Alyssa and Mark begin one of the most difficult decal applications, a white billboard for the 1970 Cuda convertible, raising the question, will Alyssa be able to put it on successfully? What we got to do is get it where it'll at least stay on its own for right now. The unburied, buried dead. The unburied dead are coming back, coming back to life. Are coming back to life. Self-proclaimed Mopar master Mark Warman and his protege painter Will Scott get paid to bring Mopar muscle cars back from the dead. They work with Mark's daughter Alyssa and his cousin Dougie. They're willing to travel anywhere to retrieve a customer's car, detailing how it lived its life and how it died. After that, they bring it back to make it look just like it did the day it was born. A few weeks ago, Cousin Dougie and Alyssa built out the 440 for the 1969 GTX. Now they're finishing the assembly to get it ready for its first fire up. Alyssa and I got the engine back from paint after assembling the bottom end of the engine. And so now what we want to do is finish building out the top of the engine, the carburetor, the plug wires, pulleys, belts, and uh, first thing we're going to do is put the transmission on. And uh, so this uh, 1969 440 engine is for a GTX. <laughs> we have a bell pin right here. Yep. And that's going to go in this reservoir? Correct. Watch your fingers. Powerful. There it is. Great. That's good. That's good. Okay. Real easy on that one. Okay. <laughs> this one real easy? Yep. Good enough. <laughs> oh, crazy there, Theo. Yeah, look powerful, huh? <coughs> so now All we have to. All done with that. Now what? Now we have to line up the torque converter and the flex plate inside here. Okay, so inside the transmission here is the torque converter and the flex plate that mounts it to the crankshaft in the engine. So right in here is where we bolt the two together. I have to put four screws in here. Beautiful. Okay. Nice. Okay, that feels good. So that's about it for our transmission installation. Awesome. Yeah. Can we take it off this thing? Uh-huh. I can put a starter on now into the transmission first on the bottom in the lower hole. You want to grab me a starter? Yeah. On the left there. Ooh. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. And then the screw goes in the top to hold the starter in place. All right. Are we getting close to being done? <laughs> I feel like we were like moving so quick. It's been so easy so far. We're doing pretty good. Okay. We're, we're getting ready to get started. <laughs> it looks like it's almost together. No what do you mean? No pun intended, right? Okay. So now we can build out the top of the engine. Okay. How hard and can that front. be? It's going to be easy. 
Okay. Right? Good, yeah, I like that. Okay. Okay, so. So, we have our pulleys. We have a couple of water nipples that go in here on the water pump that have to go in, and then the upper radiator hose has to go on. And then we'll build out the rest. Okay, well that's easy. A couple pulleys, hose. Yeah. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> We're on with our day. Ready? That's right. But we just need to get this set, so. It's even quick, though, at least. Yeah. My dad's out here, it's like, oh, <laughs> gosh. It takes forever to get anything done with my dad. Really? He's got to tell a story, he's got to do a stupid dance, <laughs> then he's got to do something else. He's gonna take time to insult somebody. <laughs> then we might get something done. Day's over at that point. Exactly. But it's exhausting to get to that point. <laughs> It'll only be like an hour and you're like, oh my gosh, I have no more energy left for the day. Just worked an hour with my dad. I like to put this hose on here. Yep. Because when we put the air compressor on for the air conditioning, it's almost impossible to get to this clamp right here. Oh. Okay, we started with the transmission, put on the starter, and uh, we've uh, put the fuel vapor separator on, some of the fittings on the front of the water pump, and the choke stove for the choke on the carburetor. So now we're gonna put on the carburetor, and then we'll do the distributor and the plug wires. Sounds good. Yeah. Take a break. How's it going? We're doing good. We're doing, we're doing good. good. Yeah, we're doing great. Are we done? No. We did a lot today. We've got this engine just about finished. We got a few more details to go, but uh, surprised to hear you say that because usually when I'm asking you how close we are to being finished, you tell me we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. So actually, I think we're we're the dream team. This went so smooth. It was a lot of fun. There was no craziness. And we got a ton done. Like, my dad's gonna be super impressed about the amount of work we've gotten done. Uh, he'll give us twice this tomorrow, right? Oh gosh, we shouldn't <laughs> have done this. And we should have continued playing stupid, like we can only get so much done in a day. But no, it went great and it was awesome and I'm looking forward to working with you again. Thank you, Alyssa, same here. All right, very good. I'm getting ready to install the billboard graphics on our 1971 Plymouth Cuda convertible. I have Alyssa working with me, and the main reason why is last time we had our Phantom Cuda here. I allowed Will, the big mouth, who says he can do everything, and Alyssa, who agrees with him, is the partner in crime who stole my car, they decided that they could put the decals on, so I let them. They never got it off the table. Why? Because they didn't read the instructions or listen to me the first time I talked to them about not getting the backing paper wet. So she is going to learn today the correct way to install a billboard graphic. I've said it many, many times that this is one of the most difficult graphics. It may not be the most, but I believe it's in the top, top three of the most difficult graphics to do. There's a lot of things that have to be considered when you're putting this decal on. So the first thing we're going to start with is just setting the decal up there, seeing where everything lines up at before we get it wet, before we start just taking the backing paper off. So the first thing we're gonna do is set our graphic up on there. Now you never wanna put a graphic on paint with the backing paper without making sure that this is clean and the backing paper is clean. Otherwise you put a little scratch in there or a dirt nib falls off on there, and then you have one under your graphic. So okay. you just wanna tack cloth it down the area where it's going to be going. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna set it up there and get an idea about what we like the looks of. Okay, so what are you looking at right now? Top? See how much reveal we have right here? Mm -hmm. And see how you have hardly any reveal over there between the wheel opening? Yeah. So if you move it forward, you see now we're starting to get that nice, nice reveal where it's, it's real even mm -hmm. along there. Mm -hmm. It might need to go up just a hair. Yeah. That's oh. okay, it's slick. And then you got the nice reveal around there. And now again, we're just dry fitting everything, yeah. just making sure. So At the back here, you never want to be over the edge. The manufacturer was never over the edge. You can be as close as you want to it back here, but you can't be over the edge. Okay. So we know that it's going to fit. We know that we have a plan of attack. Go ahead. Do you look at the body lines right here? I mean, is there a certain amount of space? Before? Or you just mostly pay attention to the body line? The line? reveal up here is okay. gonna tell you. Okay. It, this is not shaped exactly like the quarter. People want to think it is, it's not, all right? Okay. So once we get the backing paper off and it's wet and we can move it around, we're gonna have to check it against this style line right here, mm -hmm. check it on the length of the door, check it back here at the, at the rear body panel opening. There's a lot of stuff that have to be intersected, but you can't really do it with all the backing paper on right now. you can't see it. And even if you did, you'd lose your mark. Okay. okay. All right, so now we're able to take this off and we can go ahead and I'm gonna get the panel wet. Okay. All right, lay that thing up there like that. What we gotta do is get it where it'll at least stay on its own for right now. We got a nice starting point just to, just to kind of squeeze you with our hand. Make sure that it wants to stay where it wants to stay. Right there is about my front to back. So I need to go up, bring yours down right there. Now let's look at our reveal here. We gotta keep it too. We need to come back just a little bit okay. right to there. And we're gonna set the center of this thing right there. So that's one nice pass, just like that. And then down. Okay. So the middle of the field is now squeegeed out. Boy, there's not one bubble. While Mark and Alyssa finish up the driver's side billboard, Cousin Dougie heads outside to pressure wash the rear end assembly for the 1969 GTX. The same car whose 440 engine was just built out by he and Alyssa. get all the grease off of it that we can for uh, sandblasting. Up next, Cousin Dougie begins the disassembly of the 1968 GTX Dana rear end. Hit it with some uh, hot water and try to get all the grease off and get it as clean as I can. And Mark and Alyssa continue the application of one of the most difficult decals in the history of Mopar. Wait, 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 you're supposed to be letting me do all this, is my turn. In the graveyard awaiting its restoration is a car that once you turn it on is like lighting a fuse. This beautiful single owner 1968 GTX with a four speed and the standard option 440 Super Commando is only one of 9,771 ever built. The 1968 GTX also came standard with bright dual exhaust, heavy duty suspension, oversized brakes, a 150 mile per hour speedometer, dual air scoops, and red line tires. This is also one of the most documented corpses in graveyard cars history. We have the original window sticker, the delivery acknowledgement, the sales tag, the broadcast sheet, and original pictures of the car making this 1968 GTX our corpse of the week.
Now that the 1969 GTX's engine is built out and ready for its first fire up, Cousin Dougie moves the car's rear end assembly outside to clean it up with the Aladdin pressure washer. After that, it's on to the disassembly. Right now I'm pre-spraying this uh, differential housing for uh, pressure washing, try to get all the grease off of it that we can for uh, sandblasting. <clears throat> so I'm gonna hit it with some uh, hot water and try to get all the grease off and get it as clean as I can for disassembly. This rear end will be for uh, a GTX, 69 GTX for uh, West. West, yeah, 69 GTX, yeah, be a pretty car. So I'm gonna give it one good uh, hot water wash. So now we got our quarter on, all we got left is our door. Now this one, you gotta intersect this line and this line. They gotta match, yeah, so that's stressful. Wait, 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 you're supposed to be letting me do all this. This is my turn, it's my well, time I to shine. Well, I was just wiping it down, okay, all righty. My hands are a little sticky from that cloth, is that okay? Yes, that's honey. They put honey on these. Okay. Is that gonna go all the way back? Where does the 340 go? I have no information. Except well, for you think about it. You want this to wrap around the edge some, right? So if you look underneath it, there they're lined up, right? Mm -hmm. But what's that do down there? Oh, well, they're pretty close to lined up. Very good. All right. So I'm gonna let down the door. Just sporadic like that, so there's dry spots in there. So the no, sticker I'm gonna... will. You're gonna smear it. Yes. Okay. All right. Slop it. Now, careful when you get to the lettering, because sometimes lettering sticks. Yeah, sometimes they fall behind on stuff. Looks good so far. Good, good, good. Okay, go ahead and lose that and spray this down. Is that good? Okay, this thing has a lot of road tar all over it. Can you see it? So, and I found some nice markings. Yeah, so, um, after we get it all clean, probably one more washing, then we'll uh, start disassembly on it. So yeah, I wanna show Mark uh, the markings on this before I finish it up. Okay, so there's a good start on that for uh, Mr. West, 69 GTX. Okay. Right. In this side. Flizzum flazzum, said the flazoo, E-I-E-I-O. Not bad, not bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same amount of overhang on each one. So it looks like it's lined up down here, but then up here. Yeah, sometimes you have to trim the bottoms okay, depending so. on the trajectory, but you're getting an awful lot of overhang right okay. now. Okay. Oh. So you pull it back and you lose some of that overhang, see? Okay, I see. So line up your top one, because that's the one, that's the money shot, right? Right there. Yeah, and then make sure the bottom one has the exact same reveal to it. Mm -hmm. What I'm working on right now is an eight and three quarter rear end for West GTX, and I'm gonna do a disassembly. So I'm gonna start by trying to get the shock plates off here. They're really rusty. Hopefully they come loose. If they don't, I may have to cut them off there. <laughs> so let's give it a try. Got the big guns for this one. No luck. I was afraid of that. Okay, we may have to cut those off. I'll try this side real quick. No luck. Really rusty. Uh, 
Okay, we're gonna have to do this the, the hard way. I'm gonna cut the U-bolts in half. Now when I cut through that, it's gonna pop loose. It's under a lot of pressure. So this thing could fall. Nice, okay, that wasn't too bad at all. All right. Okay, I'm gonna give this one a little tap, see if it breaks loose, yep. Okay. All right. So we got two leaf springs off. In this case, it was okay to cut these U-bolts because we're gonna replace them anyway. So now I'm gonna remove the hydraulic brake lines from the top of the housing. I'm using a flare nut wrench. So anyway, it's a brake line wrench. It keeps you from stripping these out because they're gonna be really rusty like everything else was. So anyway, we're gonna get the brake lines coming out of here, out of the wheel cylinder, which is inside the brake drum. This is where you bleed your brakes from, the bleeder valve right here. Okay, got that one out. Go ahead and undo the other side. Okay. This is the bracket that attaches the brake hose to the body underneath the rear seat of the car. So this is a brake line distribution block where all the brake lines go together on top of the housing here. The differential breather for the gear oil in the differential housing to breathe. <laughs> okay, so there's little metal tabs here that hold the brake lines in place and you'll have to uh, bend them open a little bit to get the brake line out. So here's the entire rear brake assembly for the axle housing. Had a little bit of brake fluid in it. So now we can pull the drums off and uh, proceed to pull the brakes and the axles out. Wasn't too bad. So here's our brakes in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the brakes loose. Little springs. Got a spring tool here that makes removing the upper springs a lot easier. Put it in there, hook it under the spring, twist it in a half circle, pulls the springs off. We learned in our Corpse of the Week that 9,771 1968 GTXs were shipped with a four-speed 440 Super Commando. How many 1968 GTX hardtops were built with a 426 Hemi? Was it 670, 120, 410? Find out after the break. Corpse of the Week, we learned that Plymouth shipped 9,671 1968 GTX four-speed Super Commandos. Then we asked you how many 1968 GTX hardtops were shipped with a 426 Hemi. Think you know? If you said 410, you were right. And they also win for the Hemi 1968 GTX convertible with only four ever sold. Pull them out of the wheel cylinder, drop them down. Then you have to unhook the park brake cable. So now to get the axles out, there is one hole in the axle that's bigger 
than the other two. And that's where you run your socket through to take the five nuts off that hold the axle in place. You'll have to rotate the axle to every one of the five nuts to take them off through the one large hole. Now this one here on the passenger side has a lock tab on it to hold the adjusting ring which adjusts the bearings tight. <laughs> I love it. Okay, there's gonna be some gear oil on this. So, there's your passenger side axle, the bearing, and the adjuster, the adjusting ring is right here with all the fingers sticking out on it to adjust the bearing tension on the passenger side only. So a little bit earlier, my dad and I put our billboard stripe on our 1971 Cuda, the inviolate, gorgeous car. And now I'm gonna try to put our billboard stripe on the passenger side. Uh, when he shows up, I think that he went to the gym or something, um, but when he gets back, uh, he'll sit back and I will give him a tutorial on how to put the billboard stripe on. All right, so that looks pretty good. First, I'm gonna go around to the other side of the car and just look, actually, put this down. I'm gonna look at um, the reveal around the molding, around the wheel opening molding. Okay, so right now I'm just looking at the driver's side quarter panel and looking at where the reveal is all the way around the wheel opening moldings, how far it is from the back. Just kind of reminding myself before I dry fit the passenger side. Well, if it isn't the creeps. Hi, camera creeps. Dad! Creeping on everybody. You came at the perfect time. Will you help Why me Why are you this? doing that car without the ice tray, the ice man, the ice biscuit, ice shavings, vanilla ice, ice <laughs> ice baby, um, ice age the movie. Why are you working on this? Okay, so I'm trying to dry fit this. Why weren't you here an hour and a half ago and I would have been here to help you? So let me catch you up. Okay. So far, I've tack cloth, panel, and also the decal. And now I'm trying to dry fit it because I want to see. But it's actually more difficult because it's so huge. So I'm glad you came at the perfect time so you can help me hold it. 426 crate. I'm the first person to receive one of these tumblers, the very first person. And I'm also the very first person. Dead. Nobody cares. Nope. Well, I think they do care. Don't think they do. Okay. Where do you want it? That yeah, that's great, Dad. That's great. How much reveal do you have here? This is what counts. The rest of it has to go where it has to go. So how much reveal do you have there? Ooh. Um, you've heard me run through my repertoire. I'm looking for other ice things, not the camera boys. They, but you at home, so like ice shavings, ice pops, I uh, ice this? sickle, ice maneuver, ice ice baby, iceberg. See, I okay. just had that one. So, so should I there's power this? in numbers. What are you talking about? I don't know. I've been third cup of coffee. I have no idea who the hell I am anymore. Okay, coming up. Dougie completes the disassembly and restoration of the 1968 GTX Dana rear end. Oh, nice. Here's your driver's side axle, wheel bearing, retainer plate. And Alyssa proves once and for all that the apple fell a little closer to the tree than Mark initially thought. Look at that. <laughs> That's what you call the fliz and plasm pursuit. I did that. It's amazing. Okay. Got lucky the first time. Oh, nice. Here's your driver's side axle, wheel bearing, retainer plate. Pull your backing plate off. We're gonna save the backing plates. Looks like they had some anti-seize all over these places where the brakes move in and out so they don't rust up too bad. So here's your wheel cylinder, your park brake cable, and here's the back of it. Kind of rusty from exposure over the years to water. So we're gonna clean this all up and repaint it, make it look new again. We'll replace the brake cables, the park brake cables. So now I'm gonna undo all the bolts that hold the third member in place, or pumpkin, as some people like to call them.
pretty nice working in the shop like this. We have an overhead hoist, and I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on it to try to lift it up out of there. May have to tap on it with a hammer and a chisel a little bit. Maybe I won't need the chisel. So there's the third member with the gears. So we're gonna clean this up and try to salvage this one. We're gonna take our axle housing here and we're gonna clean it all up to restore it to new condition. So I'm gonna let this just hang in here and drain out for a while. So I got a lot of work to do to clean this up and get it ready to put back together. So you're looking good there, but you're looking bad here, right? You got too yeah. much reveal. So now we gotta go up and match that one. Now how are we looking down there? No, now we to... slid back a little, didn't yeah. we? So we're gonna wanna slide forward a little bit like that. Okay. Okay. Looking better. Okay. Okay. Well, yep. if you're looking for me, I'll be on my stool having some coffee. Who took my coffee? Why are you shooting it from a thousand feet away? Well, the closer you are, the more kickback you're gonna get. No, why don't you make it into more of a fan? Like that? Yep. So what do you want to do here? This is your call, Chiefers. <laughs> you, you the man. Okay, so now we're gonna take the, the, we're gonna separate. The ice girl, the ice The pit. decal. Okay. So like this. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. How it's supposed to look? Looks good. What would you do without me? I'm gonna go down to all the way Okay, wait, here. now I gotta spray it. So now we're gonna spray our decal down, uh -huh. just in case we drop this side. Yep. It'll be safe. Load that mother bear. Why'd you spray me purposely? I did it. I'll show you. Okay, turn around. Purposely is. Alrighty. Yeah, what do you think, Jeepers? No, I don't think yet. You don't yeah, think right. yet. Yeah, right. Does it need to go up a little bit? This reveal look kind of skinny? Mm. It's like right on the edge. Looks pretty good. Okay. A lot of air. Beautiful. Learning. Learning. Fruit of my loin. We learned that the 1968 GTX came standard with a plethora of rich features. Also, we learned that Plymouth made 9,771 four speeds with a standard 440 Super Commando and 410 with a 426 Hemi. True or false? It would have cost you $800 to option the 426 Hemi in 1968. Think you know? Find out after the break. We know that the 1968 GTX came standard with a plethora of luxurious features. We've claimed that to upgrade from a 440 Super Commando to a 426, it would have cost you $800. That is false. In 1968, that option was just $604.25. And if you wanted to look extra cool, you could throw in tinted windows for just $39.40. sit and look for any bubbles. And usually you'll get them on the edges where it didn't get patted down all the way or squeezy down all the way. Keep the paper as close to the panel as possible. You don't have any rings on, right? No. Okay. okay. I'm really impressed. <laughs> hey, it looks good. It does. That's crazy. Wow, good job. All right, well, we ain't out of the woods. We gotta get this thing laid down. It's doing a good job. Uh, actually, there's only like two or three little air bubbles in it, which I usually get those two, it happens. So, I'm actually shocked. She did real good. That's great, because that means I won't have to do them forever. the rear end taken apart for the 69 GTX and I have some parts ready for 
sandblasting, and I'm going to go ahead and throw them in the clean coat blasting machine and clean them up and get them ready for restoration. There, Mayor. Okay, so we're going around the letters. This is where I'm kind of nervous. This is where these are not easy to do. Like to get weird. So I've finished sandblasting the parts and uh, I'm going to pull them out of the Clemco cabinet here and uh, see how good they look. They're ready for paint. Very good. They clean up really nice. Okay, so I'll wheel them back in the shop and get them ready for paint. Got it off the table this time. So. Yeah, it's a miracle. Hey, I think I did a little better without Will's help. Look at that! Ha, ha, ha. That's what you call the flizz and flaz and flizzoo. I did that. It's amazing. Good job. Talking about it. Oh, jeez. It went really good, and my dad was really fun to work with, which is yeah, I'm winding, crazy. I'm winding down. You know, a it only now. took like five seasons for us to like be able to get somewhere. But we did it, my humor and it was now. fun. A lot of my comedy I, I steal from other people, so that's why it sounds vaguely familiar. And I'm like leaving today uh, on cloud nine, knowing that I was able to do this and Will's been painting for like 30 years and he can't do this. 50 so years and he still can't do it. He's like 39, so I don't know how that one works. Well, but whatever. Dog it's years. great, it feels good. Like I had a good day, I accomplished feel something, good? I didn't feel mess good. up, that's and awesome. you know, I'm gonna come back tomorrow, the man. What? So. Well, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't care. It's all okay in this world. Dad has been fun. I love you. Yeah, okay, I love you too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good for you. Uh, there you go. Yeah, that's okay. The old man. Uh, all right. Thank you. Kinda... My back. Fruit of my loin. The 1968 GTX 440 engine is on the engine run stand, ready to be fired up for the first time. We are in park on the transmission, that's true, right? Okay, so all we need is that coil light on, I believe at this point, and I have total faith in you and my daughter, the fruit of my loin, that you put this engine together correctly and it shall start. Okay, Shalom Aleichem, pass me a loaf of bread. Now 
Stop getting quiet. Pumped up? Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, it does. Just ran out of gas. Why'd you let it run out of gas, Dougie? I don't know. You know, I never understood why you only put one ounce in there. <laughs> Should we add some? Yeah, yeah, we could add some gas to it. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying, the head injury is nothing to take lightly. If you think you have a bad head injury, you shouldn't lay down and take a nap. Okay, Rooster, are we full? Or at least have, would you put two more ounces in there? <laughs> two more ounces. I think we ought to try it with two more ounces. Still ready? warm from the last time it ran. Sure, I'm ready. Heck yes, I'm ready. With lights. We got lights, that's a good thing. We have coil. Why don't you push that little black button? This one here? Yeah. No, <laughs> no, the other little this black button. This one right button. here. Now push the button. Okay. It's okay, it's, it's gotta get some gas up in there. Probably take a second since it ran out since you only put one ounce in it to begin with. Beautiful. Now back to where I was. No leak. Oil pressure. Good oil pressure. Nice oil pressure. Look at that. Running good. Yeah. Sounds nice. Runs good, huh? Got yes. a little bit of a water leak. Everything on the test worked great. Uh, engine runs good. Uh, we shut it down because we have a little bit of a water leak. Right here, this rear stud that holds the exhaust manifold on, it goes into a water jacket. And we seal them, but you know, things can happen. And so we're gonna have to take that stud back out and reseal it and put it back in again. But other than that, this thing is gold. We can go ahead and load it into the car, get it all married back together again, and start bolting that car together. That looks, that sounded really good. It sure did. Yeah. Rock and roll, huh? Dougie said that he used to drive around in a 70 Dodge Charger, and Doug says that when they drove that around, he could do wheelies with it. Well, I said, well, I don't think he could. In second gear. I don't, I don't think it could at all, though. That is the problem. It, in other words, the front end came up a little bit when he stepped on it. But in his mind, he was doing a wheelie. Uh-huh. So. And on that note. <laughs> sometimes you feel like a nut. Most of the time. Sometimes you don't. All right. That's a wrap. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome, Dougie. <laughs>